This is a brief demonstration on how to use draw.io to create an entity relationship diagram. The first step is to open up a new browser window and navigate to draw.io. Upon navigating to draw.io, you get redirected to a website called app.diagrams.net. Your first visit will allow you to choose where you'd like to save diagrams that you create to. Uh, for instance, in my case now, I'm going to choose Decide Later, but the program is very flexible, allowing you to save diagrams to places like Google Drive, OneDrive, Dropbox, GitHub, and others, which you could easily share with your colleagues. When you come to the website and choose where you want to save things from. Your next step would be to do a file new and look over all of the various types of diagrams the tool is capable of completing. For those of you who are not familiar with this tool, it is much like a popular Microsoft tool called Visio. Visio, as many of you know, is proprietary and comes at a very expensive licensing cost. This is a free tool allowing you to create many diagram types as in those other programs like Visio. Um, additionally, there's programs like SmartDraw and LucidCharts um, that have similar functionality. I recommend Draw.io as it's easy to use and uses the standard diagramming tools and icons that you'd expect to see in these other programs. For this demonstration, we will do an entity relationship diagram. I choose that option and then I give my diagram a name. And choose create. Once you create a new diagram, with this tool, it provides you with a sample of what the diagram would look like upon completion. This has some sample entities, such as the customer's entity, orders, and shipments, along with some attributes. Customer ID, which is a primary key of the customer's entity, with customer name as another attribute. And you also see some sample relationships. In this case, you have a relationship between customers and orders, which that relationship goes from the primary key of the customer entity to the foreign key of the customer ID on the orders entity. That's a one-to-many type relationship. And you can see that by the crow's foot on the order side. As this is just a sample, what I always do is after review, highlight everything and click delete to start from scratch. To create my new diagram using the requirements that I have captured um, of my sample entities and attributes I've outlined, I use the toolbar on the left hand side for entity relation. You'll notice there are many different types of tools available to you. And if you roll your mouse over them, you'll get a little pop out that explains what they're for. To create a new entity, you click on this first one and it will put that entity onto your diagram. You can move it around wherever you need. And for instance here, I'm going to call this entity students. And I renamed that entity by just double clicking on the text that was there and started typing my new text. The primary key in this case is going to be student ID. And out of habit, I like to indicate my data types, which will be integer. And if a field is null, or not null. And a primary key by definition has to be not null. That will uniquely identify each record in our student's entity. I'm going to now add additional attributes like first name, not null. Actually, we'll make this text and we'll say a size of 30 and we'll do not null as well. Let's do last name. We'll do text 30 not null as well. And we'll also do email, 
we'll do text 100, not null. So we require each one of our students to have a student ID, a first name, a last name, and an email. And we know that by knowing that they're not null. I chose text um, because different databases have different types of fields for data or their data types. Um, character, text, varchar, those are all very common. So depending upon your database product that you might use, you might be more specific and indicate if that's going to be a variable length character, a varchar, um, or whatever your database supports in this case. Um, so I've done this to keep mine more agnostic. Um, additionally, I'm going to do another table here, and I'm going to call this my faculty table. And again, I'm just going to drag it, and I'm going to resize things here. And I will call this faculty, and we'll do is similar to our students table. We'll do a faculty ID um, integer not null. Uh, and you might wonder while I'm naming my fields, and I'm not using any spaces or anything between the the words of my field names or my attribute names. This process is known as camel casing. And I do that because when you use spaces or special characters uh, when it comes to programming and databases, it's much harder to work with. It's possible some products and languages support it, um, but I avoid it like the plague because it makes your life more difficult when you're actually having to program around it. So camel cases is a good way to make your attributes readable um, and then avoid any pitfalls you might have because of spacing and such. Another approach you might want to do is use an underscore between words. Um, but camel casing is really readable. I just recommend you pick a naming convention and style and you adopt it and then use it consistently. Uh, the next step, what we're going to do really quickly in this design is we're going to add a relationship between our students and faculty. And this is basically going to give each student a faculty member that they're assigned to. Um, and what I'm going to do here with this tool is I'm going to add in um, one of these options called table row 2, which is an FK for foreign key. Um, and I'm going to click on it. And what we're going to do is we're going to drag it here so it merges into our student's entity and snaps in. If we snap it in properly, it'll stay everywhere we move our student's um, entity to. Um, so now that we have that FK, which means foreign key, is how we relate one entity to another in our diagrams, um, we'll rename it to match our faculty identifier or our faculty ID. We'll give it a consistent same data type. And in this case, we're not going to indicate not null. We're going to leave it so that it is nullable, whereas not all students will always be assigned a faculty member. And that allows the flexibility in case faculty members um, leave the company or leave the college, uh, etc. Now we need our relationship. Um, and what we're going to do is choose that one to many relationship line. We'll take the single line, which goes to always goes to our primary key. And we'll drag it so it snaps and attaches. And you saw that turn blue and it snapped and attached. And then we're going to do the same so that it snaps and attaches to our students. So if we read this, one faculty member can be assigned many students. And if all is attached properly, we can drag it on our diagram uh, so that our faculty have a one-to-many relationship to our students. The last part that I'll show here is what if we needed to add a new attribute into our existing entities? We have this at item here called table row one. If we click on that, it will drag into our grid layout. And we can just, again, just like the foreign key, snap it in so it attaches. And make sure it attached. And by moving your entity, you'll see if it goes with it. If it's properly attached, go ahead and rename it. So I'm going to call this my primary phone. And this will be another one of these text fields for 14. Um, and I'll make it not null. We require everybody to have um, at least one primary phone number. And that size allows for parentheses and dashes, etc. Um, as well. Uh, upon completing your diagrams, uh, the next thing I always recommend doing, um, you know, position everything so it's easy to follow and read. Um, add some 
text to it so that it gives it a, a heading. So I'm going to call this my demonstration conceptual entity relationship diagram. And I'll resize the font a little bit so it's bigger. You have other options here with the text. Um, like I said, this is a very robust tool um, and usable for many types of diagrams. And in this demonstration, I just showed you how to create a simple entity relationship diagram with two entities and a handful of attributes with one relationship between them. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you for watching.